Hi, Kyle. Governor Jesse Ventura here, or in the days of wrestling, Jesse the Body Ventura. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, Spirit of Urban Warrior will run forever. Welcome, everyone. Kyle here, and it is Saturday. And you know what that means. It's time for all the toy news, action figure, conspiracy news of the week that interests me, that hopefully interests you, and an interesting week this week, rife with conspiracy, as you saw my old friend Jesse Ventura open up the top of the show here, and you're going to see a lot more Jesse Ventura in this very video as Jesse and I are getting down to all these toy conspiracies this week. Do you ever wonder if they're watching your every move? Cell phones, internet surveillance think about this week as you guys saw a couple weeks ago we brought jesse in here we tried to break down the power town conspiracy but little did i know is that is not where the conspiracy ended it went to the teenage mutant ninja turtles it went to the wrestling retro line it went to funko and others all in between this week so we got a lot of conspiracy talk a lot of interesting controversy talk this week here in the toy news so uh saddle in grab something to drink because this could be a long video rife with conspiracy as i said but at the top we always plug do a little housekeeping we're going to do that here first we've got to talk about patreon of course the patreon giveaway for the month of march we got two figures this month a little aew a little mattel we got chris jericho luminaries edition from the aew line and then we've got bobby lashley the brand new top picks one of my favorite bobby lashley figures i love the red pants on here of course, you have to be a member of the Patreon. Check out the link in the description below for all the details. So I want to get that out of the way. And then I got to thank the WrestleRaz Facebook group once again for sponsoring Toy News of the Week this week. Go check out WrestleRaz Facebook group for all your wrestling figure collection needs, memorabilia, autographs, and a whole lot more. And tell them Kyle did send you. So there you go. There's a little housekeeping at the top. Now we got to dive into some news here. And I said, Jesse, I reached out to Jesse, of course. We're both Midwest boys. Of course, he's just one state above me, uh, and he was the mayor up there, and I'm the governor as well. Brooklyn Park, all beautiful this time of year, especially that target there. Uh, but I reached out to Jesse and said, Jesse, there is just crazy conspiracies going on. There's controversy across this action figure game this week. What's going on? What kind of advice do you have for me? And this is what he told me. You are going to face tremendous public scrutiny. In other words, the media is going to jump down your throat. They're going to investigate you. They're going to want to know everything about you at whatever level, even at the local level. It'll be the local media, but you will face the media. So you have to go into it with your eyes open on that. You will face media scrutiny. You will face also your opponent. So the best thing that I found out, honesty. Honesty is the best policy. Always remember, if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. And in the world of politics, having a good memory is important. So better just simply tell the truth about anything. Anything can be handled if you if you approach it with the truth. He's right. So There's always scrutiny in these videos. There's scrutiny in unboxing videos, but somebody's got to call things to the carpet, and that's what we're doing here in this very video today. Uh, you guys might not agree with everything. That's kind of the way it goes, but it's fun. But Jesse Ventura and I, we've dug in. We've dug in our heels. We've dissected all this, and let's break down all the toy news this week. It's going to be an all-timer, an all-timer. But let's start with some non-controversy. Uh, I guess there's controversy and everything as we always say but some non-controversy hopefully you guys checked out my videos last week we'll recap those in weekly purchases tomorrow make sure you check that one out uh, but we did do a video last week on the AEW reveals around their revolution pay-per-view we talked a little bit about that well shortly after the next couple of days after we did finally get some more clearer images of some key figures that were announced and shown in that live stream we did see an updated Danhausen Brody King, CM Punk, LJN, a little bit cleaner pictures. I tell you what, they look really, really good. And they always do, though, at that stage. We'll see once they hit mass production how they look from there. The three characters a lot of people are excited for. That LJN, CM Punk's going to be an interesting one. Of course, I go way back in the LJN days, so maybe I'm a little bit biased there. Uh, but definitely an interesting looking picture of the CM Punk figure. So more to come, but CM Punk in a couple of different releases here. Uh, to me, there's money to be made. There's money on the table. He's still under AEW contract. You would think they'd try to milk that as much as they can, whether or not he's staying with the company or not. He's technically still under contract, so why wouldn't you get the money out of it? That's kind of where I sit on that one. 
We'll see where it goes. We also saw some in-package pictures of Supreme Series 3, Penta, and Phoenix. Those should be here fairly soon. I think somebody said somewhere uh, they are going to be shipping out this month. So I guess be ready for the Lucha Bros in the Supreme line. Supreme line, always good to get figures from. Uh, a little bit more interesting news. And if you guys go back on the channel, let's talk a little Mattel Creations. Let's talk about the crowdfunding new gen ring. You guys remember the madness that the new gen ring had. We had Macho Man added as an early bird. Uh, well, Steve on the wrestling figure message boards out there has talked a little bit. Didn't really give any details, but we are going to see the next crowdfunding item from Mattel very soon. And as I said way back in that video, that was one of the things. I broke down the pros and cons of all that. I think it was a very well received video uh, totally unbiased taking that business step back talking business and what I would do if I was Mattel and I don't want to say they took my ideas or anything like that, uh, but I am rooting for this. I will be rooting for the new one, but they are going to announce it, which leads me to believe WrestleMania Access just a couple of weeks away. I think that will be the time to announce it. Then the week after, you know, maybe that Monday, Tuesday, the next week, you can start backing this thing. This is the time of the year to do it, as I said in those new gen videos. You shouldn't do it around San Diego Comic-Con. Every company has exclusives, things going on. It's too busy. It's too hard on the wallet during that time. I said, hey, WrestleMania season is the time to do a crowdfunding for wrestling figures, and it seems like that is the way they're going here. There's more eyes on wrestling than ever throughout the year around WrestleMania season. You get extra eyes looking at this crowdfunding opportunity. I think it just makes all the sense in the world. So it sounds like we are going to see that here in the next month or so. They did say it's going to be more expensive than the last one. That being said, I don't know if there's a lot of... Uh, I don't know what the word is. Truth in that? There's truth. It's going to be more expensive, but inflation is obviously involved. So it could be the same quality, the same as it was last time, but just with inflation, it's going to be a few more dollars. It's not necessarily since it's going to be more money, we're going to get more bang for our buck. That's going to be an e a hard one to kind of dissect and, and find the value through. It'll be interesting to see what they come out with. There's a lot of people thinking it's going to be the Raw Ring or the Nitro Arena, things like that they've shown us. To me, I want to see, and I called this way back when. Now, if you remember the first crowdfunder, what did I say it was going to be? I said it was the 25th anniversary, or was it the 20th? 20th, 25th anniversary, what it was, probably... 20th? Maybe it was 25th. I think it was 25th anniversary of the Bash at the Beach with Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, uh, of course, uh, Hulk Hogan joining the NWO, starting the NWO. I thought for sure the first crowdfunding would be that. Have those three as an ultimate in a nice deluxe box set. Who knows? Throw in Mean Gene uh, doing a little ring thing. I think that would have been an awesome set. They could still do that set one of these days. That's what I thought it would be. Well, it ended up being the new gen arena. It ended up being a lot more than I anticipated. So my guess is, and I don't know if it's going to be right, but here's what I want. I believe this year, correct me if I'm wrong, is the 25th anniversary of Undertaker versus Mankind in the Hell in the Cell. One of the most important matches of all time. Even people that are not fans of wrestling are aware of this match. It's probably one of the most viral matches of all time. Can you imagine if that came out right now, how viral that match would have went? Just think about that. 25th anniversary, we just got the Attitude Kane ring. Well, do you give us the Cell? Do you give us an Ultimate Mankind, an Ultimate Undertaker, and then an Early Bird? An Early Bird Ultimate Terry Funk with removable shoes, man, it writes itself at this point, uh, but maybe barricades for the ring, the announcer's table, who knows what they could do. They give us an ultimate Jerry Lawler sitting there as an announcer. There's a lot of ways they could go with that one. Heck, we got the attitude ring. Could we get the cell with that, all the trap doors, everything else? You get a stretcher to put Mankind on, the whole accessory set, you get thumbtacks, you name it. So that's what I would like to see. I think that would be really cool. That would fit with that cane ring, which I believe is still up for stock on uh, Mattel Creations. Makes sense. They're going to have that sitting there because people will crowdfund that. Then they will actually buy that ring as well. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe they throw in an ultimate uh, Shawn Michaels from the Bad Blood match versus Kane. You could kind of do that. You could just have a whole Hell in the Cell themed playset. So that's what I would really like to see. Who knows if we're going to get it, but we're going to find out very, very soon. So stay tuned to the channel. Stay tuned to social media, all that fun stuff for that. Continuing on with more news, Heroes Hideout Demolition Wrestling Dudes. I didn't pre-order these, but I think the pre-order went up for about like two years ago for these things here. 
Well, it sounds like they're finally shipping out in September. To me, these look like the old headliner figures. You remember those, those little statues, the big, huge heads? There's a lot of professional athletes and things. That's what those remind me of. But if you're into that kind of thing, it sounds like they're finally going to be shipping. I think they're only limited to like 500. You can get them autographed as well from Demolition. Old Axe and Smash, always good to have their autographs. Uh, but for you guys that pre-ordered those, your time is up. Your time is now like a young John Cena. So stay tuned for those. Uh, Major Bendy's roll on. The Major Bendy's, of course, the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast cast group an old knick out there putting out there they got hacksaw oh hacksaw jim duggan they got the blue tights and the black type variants they were also looking hey you guys tell us do you want the, the two by four removable you want it to be stuck in hand you guys vote so being very fan friendly there letting the fans kind of help decide steer the ship a little bit there but if you're looking for your hacksaw jim duggan you better get after it uh pre-orders are up right now and ending fairly soon so stay tuned there FTC. We don't talk a lot of FTC wrestling figures with good reason. Uh, it's an interesting one. It's a mixed hybrid of deluxe aggression and ruthless aggression figures with uh, kind of crazy heads most of the time. And they've had some good figures. The ones with face paint usually work out pretty well, but the others not so hot. But one thing a lot of people do go to FTC for is some of the accessory kits out there. And they did announce a few things this week that I think might get a lot of toy photographers, uh, toy players, kids and stuff involved. As we first did see the FTC FTC Shark Cage. Of course, old school 80s. Heck, it probably goes back to like the 50s. But it was always a manager is always getting involved or a tag team partner or a stable member getting involved. Well, what do you do? We're going to have a match and we're going to lock that uh, manager into a shark cage. We're going to hang him up above the ring. You know, Jim Cornette would be in there, Gary Hart, you name it. All the greats over the years. Well, we're getting that from FTC. That's something I might even pick up. That would be really cool to have in the collection. Really, really old school. Just a cool idea. Nobody else is making it and that's where FTC swooped in. So the hole and filled the customer's needs right there. So I think that is a pretty cool one here. And then FTC coming out with a stage. How about that? Trying to beat, I guess, Mattel to the punch a little bit because you know eventually we'll get a stage from Mattel again. Well, we're getting an FTC stage and to my eye, it goes back to the early infancies of Mattel. It looks to be that same mold. I wonder if that mold came up and uh, there was no rights to it or whatever. They said, hey, we'll reuse this, stick this back out. So if you're looking for a cheaper version of a stage, this might be the way to go. They have some pretty good toy photography pictures around that as well so an interesting dynamic with ftc in the market here now we turn our attention to some retros and this is going to get into some conspiracy stuff here in a second and a little business talk as well but let's hit some of the highlights here this week is the retro segment i need a little bumper music and stuff for the retro corner the retro corner update of the week as uh, there's no stopping with that there's retro madness retro overload as i do say Hassel Toys showing updated images of Savio Vega. Once again, he listened to the fan base. He fixed the head on that, so there is some of that, so that was a little update. He also showed some images of Mark Canterbury, Henry O. Godwin, whatever you want to call him. That is coming as well, so we got some updates there. Always got to keep their name out. These small companies, they don't have the backing of Mattel, Hasbro, and McFarlane Toys. They got to keep putting their name out. They got to show artwork. They got to show prototypes. They got to show that stuff just to keep getting their name out there because they will be lost in the shuffle. If you just announce Savio Vega, here's a picture of him, and you put up a pre order, and then you don't talk about it forever, you're not going to get a lot of sales. And at the end of the day, we got our business hat on, and uh, we're talking business here. So you got to be out there in front of the consumer, and that's what they're doing. So uh, there's Hassel Toys update. A very cool looking figure this week from Zombie Sailor Toys, of course, the leading guy of retro outside of Mattel. I would say uh, she did get the jump start to uh, market before a lot of the others out there. But we did see this week Matt Cardona, the bloody two-pack version that's going to be with Nick Cage. He showed some pretty glamour shots. Sounds like that thing's going up for order, not pre-order, this summer. So this one looks really, really cool. I love the blood and guts figures, you guys know. I love it when blood is on an action figure, except for those old, what was that, FTC, I think, back in the day. Those old Legends ones, man, those were brutal. But uh, this looks absolutely awesome. I will be a day one buyer of this. Looks very, very cool. Even comes with a light tube or two. Uh, just very cool. I think even a pizza cutter is going to be in there. Oh, the Pizza King needs a pizza cutter. Uh, very cool looking there. So I'm excited for that. More to come on Zombie Sailor. Every single week there's more to come on Zombie Sailor. Uh, and then we turn our attention over to Rush Collectibles. They're kind of the dormant one here as they've announced talent. They've announced artwork. They've done all this stuff, but we've never seen anything to market. Well, this week they came back uh, with a fury showing more artwork, showing more packaging artwork. They showed the French Angel, which is about the deepest of deepest cuts out there. The only reason I know about the French Angel is, uh, of course, the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, the Luthez Hall of Fame. It's in Waterloo, Iowa. I've been going there every year except one year I missed. I believe it was last year's year I missed, too, uh, since 2004. 
for the induction weekend. Well, in that museum, they have a bust of the French angel's head. It's about this big on me. That's how big his head is. It's just absolutely crazy. So we're getting an action figure of him. I would love to know sales numbers. We'll never be told the sales numbers on it, but I don't know how many people are going to buy this because it is a deep cut. Even for hardcore wrestling fans, they don't know the French Angel. But it is an interesting figure. It is a cool-looking figure. I did pre-order it. I guess we'll talk about it on the channel when that time does come. Who knows? Stay tuned for that. But we did see that this week. And then we saw figure collections, of course. You know, with the split of Cella into epic toys and figure collections. Things have got a little murky in the waters there, but we did see this week Missy Hyatt coming to the line, and longtime fans know Missy Hyatt. She was something else in the 80s and early 90s, especially in the NWA WCW time frame. Uh, pretty much the hottest chick in wrestling at the time. Uh, got a little crazy uh, later on with some of the plastic surgery, I think, but Missy Hyatt, no doubts, did a lot for wrestling, especially back in the day, and getting her first action figure here. Amazing, a character like Missy Hyatt's never had a figure before. This is a start. I would love to see her more in this kind of scale behind me, but we'll take a retro for now. And I love the added accessory here. Looks really, really cool. It's old school as old school gets. You get the purse with the brick inside of it. Oh, that's female managers back in the day, always putting something, having the loaded purse, uh, just really on brand right there. Just very, very cool. Now we gotta turn our attention to the first conspiracy of the week. Who ever wonder if they're watching your every move? Cell phones, internet surveillance think about it we're gonna talk kwk kayfabe heroes they were in the news a lot this week and we've talked about them pretty much every week like all these other retro companies out there and i really do like what this company is doing uh sean ng is spearheading that i believe it's 100 percent his company uh but a lot of good looking figures we have been shown prototypes for we talked about the kamalas we've talked about the los conquistadors but the kamalas looking awesome just looking really good and it's like to me i almost put it in my mind as if hasbro kept the license with the wwf wwe all these years they would eventually morph into this away from kind of the cartoony look they would morph into these more really lifelike little statues is almost how these look and i really think they look awesome especially the kamala i can't wait to get one in hand to see what all the fuss is about but this is where the conspiracy starts here and there was a lot of hubbub on the internet this week uh, about the lost Los Conquistadors and Haystacks Calhoun and apparently Sean and the team at KWK not having the trademarks and we'll talk about this but not being uh, officially working with the uh, talent there not working with Haystacks and his family not working with Los Conquistadors and uh, their family but let's break this down let's talk a little business hat let's get our lawyer in here i wish i had my dad here you know my dad went to some law school he knows a lot of this stuff it'd be great uh tom peterson uh, kyle's dad's law corner we can have him sitting here we just turn the camera over and point to him and he could give his little two cents maybe we'll work on that in future videos but let's break it down let's start with los conquistadors right off the bat how many hardcore fans even know who los conquistadors are the los conquistadors gimmick the whole gimmick there most hardcore fans think they're Edge and Christian. There's very few people that go all the way back to those original Survivor Series, seeing them in the tag team, seeing them in matches, uh, kind of enhancement talent like an Iron Mike Sharp in the tag team department there. Uh, a lot of people don't even know who Los Conquistadors even are. It's a, just, who is a Los Conquistador? Nobody knows. And who knows, taking it one step further, who's under the mask of them? And now apparently there was two guys uh, that were the characters to originate, but I believe there was more after that. There was, of course, Edge and Christian and then we remember the match where people thought it was Edge and Christian they were standing outside the ring there was different people in the gimmick so there's been people under the hood that weren't the original two now apparently nobody owned the trademark to Los Conquistadors so that tells you something right there if the WWE does not want to trademark something like that that they should have ownership from they view that as there is no money on their part to be made by it so the trademark is open to anybody anybody can swoop in that is business we've seen that before with uh, different trademarks in wrestling didn't Cody trademark uh, a couple of pay-per-view names at one time because WWE let it lapse weren't paying attention or they saw no value in it and that's just kind of the way it goes in business this is just wrestling figures this is anything you can sneak in and steal a trademark now los conquistadors whether it's worth a whole lot or not uh, that's to be debated I, I don't know it's up to you what you believe there but sean went over there and in the china courts and guess what he is from china so guess what that's what he would go he's not going to go to the canadian courts he's not going to go to the american courts 
And we see trademark law is very complicated. Uh, and I am by no means a lawyer, but you see some things trademarked in certain countries that aren't trademarked in other countries. Uh, I've seen that with CDs. I used to be a huge CD guy. You couldn't sell it in the United States, but they could sell it in the UK. Well, you'd get an importer exporter. They would import it for you, export it for you. It would be the same thing with Sean's doing here. Maybe he's got the trademarks, all that for China, for his area. Guess what? People are going to import that, sell that overseas. And it is what it is. That's kind of the way it goes. So it is a little bit complex. It is there, but most people don't know Los Conquistadors. And Sean, he went to the China uh, lawyers, got the trademark there, but he has reached out to them. He is working on a deal with them, uh, trying to make everybody happy. He def definitely doesn't want to split the fan base. No, none of these toy companies, I don't care if it's the biggest or smallest one, they don't want to split their fan base. They don't want to get their fan base mad at them. They definitely don't want to do that. And uh, Sean's the same way, but he was just doing following the law in his area. Area. Say what you will, but how about the WWE? Let's think about them. Let's think of Doink the Clown. We got the Ultimate Doink. We got the Retro Doink. Do we think Steve Lombardi, uh, Ray Apollo, uh, Matt Bourne, his family, are they getting paid anything by Doink the Clown? WWE owns the trademark, but does Matt Bourne own anything? Do they anything? Do they see money? It's kind of the same thing. If Sean doesn't give any money to the Los Conquistador family, well, who is the Los Conquistadors? And it's the same thing that WWE probably says with Doink the Clown. Well, who is Doink the Clown? This could be any three. It's more about Doink the Clown, not the character uh, that played Doink the Clown. So that's a pretty gray area. But then you get into the Haystacks Calhoun situation. That's a little bit different. And he is very hard to track down. Well, he's dead. So yeah, he's obviously hard. Hard. Apparently he has a daughter. That's been a rumor for a long time. Nobody knows how to get a hold of her. Very hard to get a hold of, things like that. But let's be honest, there is Haystacks Calhouns on indie, indie feds across the United States, probably across the world. Heck, I've seen them back in the 90s when I started going to indie shows and things like that. There'd be Haystacks Calhoun Jr. Or there'd be uh, Jim Haystacks. I'm the cousin of Haystacks Calhoun. You would see that stuff all the time. People marching all over that trademark. And he did what he could. He licensed that over there. It is different because it's actual human. Haystacks is an actual person where the Los Conquistadors more of a gimmick, not a real face. So there is differences between those. Once again, he is reaching out to the family of Haystacks Calhoun. But it's a weird deal, and a lot of people coming down pretty hard on this, and rightfully so in some instances here. But think of all the bootlegging that goes on that is not on the up and up. KWK went through the China courts, got up and up as far as they're concerned in their territory, their part of the world. we got to be on a world stage here. How many people and how many of you guys out there, yeah, you guys are buying bootleg wrestling shirts? Are you buying bootleg merchandise? If somebody's making a Sting shirt uh, on these uh, sites and stuff all over the place, there's tons of people buying that kind of stuff. That's part of the problem as well. And I got to believe people buying an NWO DX bootleg shirt, they're going to sell in a lot bigger quantities than some of these action figures. So it is a total gray area, but there's a lot more to the story like everything else. And the conspiracy running wild, of course, with Jesse Ventura's help. But Jesse helped me break this down. And Jesse, a renaissance man as well. So there's a lot going on there. Uh, we'll see how it shakes out. But he is doing the right thing. He is reaching out to those families, signing deals with them. And I'm sure the Los Conquistadors said, we'll take money. Sure, we'll take money. Anybody would take money, especially in their position there. So a very, very interesting dynamic, very interesting business talk, a very interesting conspiracy. But the news marches off on. Like I said, this is going to be a long news video. There's a lot going on this week. Uh, we saw Mondo Trapjaw. We talked about it last week. It did go up for pre-order this week, 48 hours hours only. Man, absolutely awesome. Absolutely game-changing. I did pre-order it. Hurt. 250 bucks. Man, it hurt. I've had an expensive couple of weeks. I gotta, I gotta figure something out here. I gotta get some of that money back somehow. We'll see what happens, but very expensive to get that, but I wasn't gonna miss it, and I hate those 48-hour timed releases. Uh, you just got one shot at glory, and then you're done, but I did pick that one up. Uh, NECA Turtles this week, Holothon, of course, Dreadmon was going into your stores this week. Look for Dreadmon, sounds like limited of one. Uh, Casey Jones, Donatello Universal Monster Crossovers, I think they're going to be either next week or the next, maybe both those, maybe Casey one week, Donatello the next. So the Holothon marches on, be ready the month of March. Uh, Target's taking a lot of money out of collectors' wallets, as you guys are fully aware at this point. Speaking of collectors and wallets, NECA Online, uh, pre-order is ending for the portal generator for Donatello. That did go up a couple weeks ago kind of flown under the radar but if you want that you better go to NECA online right now and pre-order that uh, it's only available online sounds like it's not going to be in the store so you turtle fans you better get after that while you can and then we did see a few more turtle things this week as 5k toys if you remember 
gosh, when did we unbox it on the channel? Six months ago, let's say. What is time, as we always do say here? Uh, we unboxed Spring, which was technically Leonardo, not Leonardo. Well, they announced their second round of figures for that from the 5K Toys. We're getting Splinter, uh, we're getting an accessory kit, and we're getting Autumn, which is actually Donatello. So we got three of those coming. You can put your $5 down to hold the figures, then you have to pay the rest when they do come out. Very cool. I figure I'm just going to buy the main characters here, but that always is a descent into madness, so we'll see what goes on. Uh, it sounds like they're working on the scaling a little bit. Once again, we'll see what happens when we get final ones in our hands, but very interesting. If you're into that kind of stuff, uh, take a look right there, which leads us to Eternal Conspiracy. You ever wonder if they're watching your every move? Cell phones, internet, surveillance, think about it. On Thursday, we saw some images of the brand new Super 7 Ultimates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Wave. And if you guys have been following along at home, Super 7 Ultimates are based on the Playmate toys. Well, that's where the conspiracy hits. Apparently, Nickelodeon, who owns the license to the Turtles, Playmates as well. The word going around on the streets, the old dangerous streets, is that Playmates said, wait a minute, Super 7, you're dancing all over our copyright. You're dancing all over our trademarks with these Playmates inspired figures. Now, nobody's really sure at this point if that's the truth or not. Of course, I'm filming this on Friday morning, uh, so take note of that as well if more news comes out. Uh, but the conspiracy here is what is going on as why did this whole line change theme, change direction? Now, we got uh, a singing rock and roll uh, Leonardo one. Kind of fits on brand with what we've seen some of the past lines. But then we're getting a ninja April O'Neil uh, with COVID mask as well as one of the heads has her COVID mask. Uh, we're getting a repaint of Casey Jones, and then we're getting a Rat King that is totally different than the original Playmates version. We remember that nightmare fuel back in the day, so not sure what's going on there, but that is what the early rumors going around the old rumor mill out in the back alley streets are saying uh, Nickelodeon or Playmates more likely said, hey, none of this going forward, so Super 7 had to figure out what the heck we're going to do. Do we end the line? Do we give our own little tweaks? I don't know how I feel about this. Is the beauty and what we've seen so far in this line is it was Playmates represented how we really imagined the figures to be. If they're going to go away from that, I can see a lot of people jumping out because I don't know how many people want a new version of Rat King. Rat King reimagined. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. So this is going to be an interesting dynamic. It's going to be a very, uh, very interesting wave of the Turtles to see where the future of that line goes. But I think a lot of people are going to be pretty negative on this wave. It's just weird when business gets involved and not everybody's up front telling us what exactly is going on. Like I said, we'll probably get some more details in the next couple of days. So I guess look for that as well. But uh, very interesting, very interesting times. And speaking of interesting times, last week we talked about new Marvel Legends. You guys remember that? We talked about the new Spider-Man. We talked about that live stream. They showed some Avengers figures. Well, this week we got some stuff going up for pre-order. Oh, everybody loves a good pre-order, and that's what we got here with the Spider-Man retro-carded wave. But once again, some uh, controversy with that is we got a couple of characters on the old-school retro-carded wave. We got Tarantula and the Rose on the cool retro card. We all know it. We love it. But then we got a curveball from the Marvel Legends team. What are they doing here? There was a lot of secrecy around this wave saying, what's the Build-A-Figure? What's the Build-A-Figure? Well, surprise, no Build-A-Figure. It's retro-carded wave. That's a way to save some money. We don't have a ton of accessories with these. A lot of people complaining these $24.99 price point. No Build-A-Figure piece. Not a lot of accessories. What are we doing, Hasbro? The conspiracy continues. But we did see on these new retro cards, and I think a lot of completionists of the retro card wave are like... Nope, I'm going to get the retro ones, not these new retro carded figures. But that is going to be Spider-Woman as part of that. We did get Miles Morales. We did get Ben Riley as Spider-Man. Chasm, Chasm, we got that one as well. And we got Elektra as Daredevil on these new cards. So a very interesting move here by Hasbro. I thought we were going plastic free. What is going on here? We're back to some plastic. I don't know what's up with Hasbro here, and we're going to talk a little bit more Hasbro later on this video as the conspiracies are running wild today on the channel, and we got some interesting topic to talk about that one later on in this video. But uh, the new card, the retro card, and the new retro card, those are up for pre-order right now at all the fine retailers like Entertainment Earth. Use this code Kyle. Save yourself 10%, and of course, anything over $59 does ship free, so make sure you go over there. But now we get back to another conspiracy. You ever wonder if they're watching your every move? Cell phones, internet, surveillance, think about it. 
Pulsing. Yes, another conspiracy. There's too much conspiracy to contain this, but today, here's another conspiracy. Toy Biz announced last week, hey, we're coming back, and, and everybody was like, what? Well, everybody was like, what, if you're like me? Then a whole other segment of people is like, I'm getting my old school Marvel Legends back. They're coming to the Toy Biz style. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop the clock. Take that business step back. Hasbro is working with Disney. That who has the Marvel brand right now. There is no way Toy Biz is coming back out with their Marvel Legends style figures. It's just not going to happen. I think best case scenario, we don't, do know Toy Biz back in the day did a legendary Heroes wave. I think they had Savage Dragon in there, Judge Dredd. Maybe they could go that route. They could find some other uh, comic property, things like that to release some figures, maybe in that style. That's a possibility. To me, I'm not even sure if this will ever get off the ground because you're walking, once again, we talked about the KWK, walking on trademarks, being fast and loose. Same thing here. Well, guess what? The Toy Biz name went up for, uh, you know, anybody could buy it. The trademark probably just expired. Nobody wanted it. Nobody found value in the trademark there, so it went up. And we've seen that many a times over the years with different stuff, as we talked about earlier. Well, somebody jumped in, and apparently it was an old Toy Biz employee. They jumped in and said, I'm going to take that name. I'm going to take that name back. And we've seen that in the past with, like, Toys R Us. Didn't that name go up? Or maybe it was KB Toys. KB Toys, their name went up. Somebody grabbed it. KB's coming back. No, somebody grabbed the name. That's all it was. And that's what I see here with Toy Biz. They say they're going to come back. They're coming back and hot. They're going to do some stuff. I just don't see it happening. I just don't see it having the legs to stand on. It's going to be a much smaller company. There's going to be no Marvel uh, tie-in. There's going to be no WCW tie-in either. Uh, so Toy Biz, I think that ship has sailed. But a lot of people have a lot of fond memories, myself included, of that name back in the day. I just don't see this having the legs to get off the ground. But we'll see what happens. But if you think your Marvel Legend Toy Biz are coming back, absolutely not. So a little conspiracy there and a little confusion in the marketplace with that Toy Biz announcement this week. I just, uh, much more to come before I even take it seriously at this point. So we'll see what happens with the Toy Biz. But one other thing we did see here this week was another conspiracy. I wonder if they're watching your every move. Cell phones, internet, surveillance. Think about it. Poster. It's the Funko Pop craziness, just absolute zaniness. Pretty much every media outlet, the CNNs, the Foxes, you name it, picked up this Funko news story that they're destroying $30 million in inventory. Yes, you heard that right, $30 million with an M, not quite a B, but an M. They're destroying that, and basically it comes down to they have so much product, and this goes back to what we've been saying on this very YouTube channel in the Toy News Weekly Purchases videos every single week is there is a huge demand. It's all about supply and demand. Demand was there. Everybody had money. Everybody was buying. Well, inflation hit. Things stopped down. People stopped buying and all these stores we see it you guys watch my figure hunt videos check out these walmart stores you're probably the same way aisles gondolas full of product on clearance going nowhere i almost think you gotta just throw that stuff away or just donate it i don't know what they're gonna do with a lot of that junk and it really is junk at this point Funko feeling the same thing. I've said for a long time, I get the desire, I get the like of Funko. I have a few. I dabble from time to time, but there's just too much out there. They just have too much stuff coming out on a continual basis. Well, it finally caught up to them. They have warehouses full of product, and we know about pop culture, which they specialize in. Things move pretty fast. You know, The Office is really hot right now, or this movie is really hot right now. They get all these Funko Pops made. Well, all of a sudden, that movie's come and gone. It's been off the screens. It's been to DVD. It's six months later. Not a lot of people looking for that pop anymore, so where does it go? It sits in a warehouse, and I can tell you from my business world, my day job out there, uh, retail space is not cheap. Storage space is at a premium right now. Funko having massive warehouses full of all this product, guess what? It would cost it costs more to store the stuff than they could actually make out of it. So it comes to a point where you just got to cut your losses. Let's just uh, cut it, disappear, get rid of it. That's why it all went to the dumpster. And I know a lot of people are saying, what the heck? That doesn't make sense. Give it to Toys for Tots. Donate it. Sell it to the Ollies and the Big Lots and the Dirt Cheaps of the world. You'll get at least some money out of it better than none. Well, not really because you got transportation. You got all the invoicing, all the paperwork all that kind of stuff for pennies on the dollar for those pops and most pops around ten dollars you're gonna sell them to dirt cheap for 15 cents each it takes a lot of 15 cent pops to get your money back and will these places take all those so you think of all the labor all the work all the transportation that would be involved in doing that 
instead of one big transportation straight to the dump. Uh, you got to put that there. And a lot of people said, well, you could at least donate it. It is a tax write-off. Well, I do know because I've worked with many big companies, and I know one big company I work with, they hit their yearly donation amount. You can only donate so much. There's only there's a certain limit. You can't donate everything and you know cook the books, <laughs> I guess. But you can only donate so much. And the company I work with, they hit their yearly donation thing at the end of February. Everything after that is just a goodwill donations. And let's be honest. We love goodwill donations. I'm sure Funko donates a lot of stuff year long, but you're only going to do so much of that stuff. You can only do so much of that stuff with your stockholders, everything else. So they really saw no way out of this mess, but besides just destroying it. It seems crazy, but when you take that business step back, that's just the way it goes. I guarantee you, though, if Funko Pops going forward, they might be more selective in who they're making, and definitely the quantities are coming down, and I think we're going to see that across the board. Quantities coming down, which it needs to happen. I'm just scared it's going to go back pre-COVID days where the pendulum swing way too far, and we remember people complaining all the time, nothing is on the shelves, the pegs are empty all the time, the pegs are always empty, and I think that's what we're going to be headed to later this year, as the prophecy was foretold uh, years ago here on this very YouTube channel. So quite the conspiracy there with Funko, a lot of people asking questions, a lot of people just seeing the headline and not diving into the root cause, and we see that a lot of things in everything. Nobody wants the full story. They just want to be offended and take it from there. Uh, there's more to the story. There's more than meets the eye like a young Transformers, as we do know. So now we're going to continue on into some big news this week. Something you guys know I wear on my sleeves. I wear my love for G.I. Joe. And man, I'm living in a golden age of G.I. Joe right now. This week on this channel, brand new G.I. Joe classified figures. Series 1, Super 7, Ultimate G.I. Joe through the door. Oh, what a time to be alive. Truly what a time to be alive. Well, this week we had a live stream and we did see some pipeline reveals. Here's some stuff that's coming down the line. We're finally getting quick kick. You can put your Shang-Chi custom away. We're getting quick kick in the G.I. Joe Classified line, a perennial favorite, one of my all-time favorites. I don't know how he wasn't cold. He must have been really warm-blooded. Uh, but we got quick kick coming. We got Big Boa, another classic one. Of course, it was supposed to be Rocky Balboa, for those that know that story. But Big Boa coming to the line. And I talked about this a long time ago. I felt like this was leaked way back when, but it is Mutt and Junkyard coming to the Classified line as well. Uh, I got to think the next live stream we'll see renders, and maybe the next live stream after that we might see pre-orders up. So that's a little thing that are coming down the line. And then we did see some render reveals. So the way they're playing it with the classified line, we see these pictures, these render reveals. That means probably the next live stream they have, maybe it'll be May, June possibly, uh, we will get these up for pre-order. But they did show Tunnel Rat based on Larry Hama, G.I. Joe legend, of course, and an all-time favorite going back to the old G.I. Joe animated movie as well. We got Tunnel Rat coming. Uh, we got Low Light, another guy that's been rumored and talked about for a while. Love Low Light. You got to think we're going to get a Marauder's Low Light as well down the line like Barbecue. We got Shadow Tracker, a deep cut a lot of people don't know about, but he was all the rage if you collected the Pursuit of Cobra line back in the day, probably 2004 ish 2005 six seven somewhere in there man what is time uh but the pursuit of cobra lit wave was an awesome wave i bought all those figures but i did sell them all uh in a purge one day but uh very cool to get shadow tracker somebody from uh outside of the gi joe headspace of the cartoon and comics uh something a little bit more modern in the classified line he is a cool looking character so we're getting that one and then one i did talk about in uh, some of my reviews this week on the classified i said i do think and i think it was about scarlet i mentioned i said i do feel series one we're going to see some updates to those characters because we all remember the classified line started off one thing it morphed into something else uh, and that's what we got to need some remakes of some of those scarlet included well we're seeing the Cobra Island Firefly was the first release. Now we're getting a more classic Firefly in the classified line. So that should be very, very interesting to see how that one ends up netting out uh, when that does come up for pre-order. But then speaking of pre-orders, pre-orders did go up this week. Copperhead, an all-time favorite of mine. I got a good story when we do an unboxing of that one uh, when that day does come. We're getting the OG original Bazooka. We knew that was coming. Torpedo, a lot of people excited about Torpedo. Shipwreck, one of my all-time favorites coming to the line. Can't wait for that. And then Rock and Roll, he's even got the devil horns going on. And it, it, Maybe Rock and Roll has evolved over time, but he used to be loving to the Beach Boys. That was his stuff. He loves some Jane and Dean. He loves some Beach Boys. Now he's probably rocking the Ronnie James Dio is what he's rocking here. But Rock and Roll was a very, very cool one. Uh, he always reminded me of my grandpa when I was a kid, uh, the figure. 
my grandpa served and all that kind of stuff. That's what he kind of reminded me of. But very cool to get that. And I, one thing I have to mention here is the new packaging art. I've been pretty critical on the packaging art on the Classified series from the get-go. This is a step in the right direction. It's not plastic-free, but I like what they're doing with the fronts instead of the crazy artwork. Let's get back to basics. Let's show the product, not the artwork. And that's what they're showing, some of this. And I love the Easter eggs they're putting in the artwork there. Shipwreck with the bicycle from the PSA. You got those big worms. Those things were nightmare fuel when you were a little kid uh, back up behind Torpedo. Uh, just very, very cool-looking stuff right there. So I'm here for those, here for the classifieds all day long, here for anything G.I. Joe. But the hits keep on continuing as we did see Scrap Iron and a drone and Scrap Iron looking real cool. Removable helmet, glasses. He's all scarred up from some uh, bombs gone awry. He's got a little mohawk action. Very, very cool. But it sounds like he's going to be a pretty expensive big boy up there, about $50 price point on him. And that's going to be that new price point on the animal and weapons and vehicle packs they're going to have there. We did see a Hasbro Pulse exclusive Valkyries. So Cobra Officers, female edition. I picked up two sets of those. A lot of people picking up three and more. Those are $54.99, pretty expensive there. And then we did see Snow Job, an early G.I. Joe favorite, $34.99. Uh, a lot of people arguing a little bit about the price points, if they're okay with it, not okay with it. It's for you to, I guess, decide there. But some very, very cool stuff coming from the G.I. Joe Classified line. Some old school favorites uh, coming to the Classified line. I'm very excited for that. Then the hits keep on coming. Valifair, Valiverse, of course, Action Force. They had their big weekend event where they were announcing new stuff. We did see a ghillie suit. Very, very cool. Very army-like, uh, you know, hiding in the woods, hiding for a sniper, things like that. We saw that. We saw some accessory add-on sets for Eclipse and Kill Shot and uh, some of their grunts, some of their soldiers, things along those lines. I'm not the biggest fan of that stuff since I'm such a purist with my figures. I don't like, you know, here's a Pandora bonus set where you can dress her up and things like that. It's like, I feel like I need to get two each of these if I'm going to do that. I don't know. I'm absolutely crazy, though, but very cool stuff. And we did see two new female figures coming from Valiverse as well. A lot of people are over the moon with the brand new Valiverse figures, uh, especially the female figures figures the eclipse especially a lot of good talk and pandora of course so some cool stuff coming from valiverse sounds like no sign of them slowing down we talked a little bit about their a-team inspired line we got a vehicle coming so if you're a fan of gi joe action figures military action figures there is a lot to like right now if you are a collector so that's the valiverse update and we're going to finish this video off with another conspiracy step on the red cross on the green never take a ride in a stranger's machine whoever wonder if they're watching your every move Cell phones, internet, surveillance, think about it. Pulse yes, and maybe the lightest conspiracy here is uh, this week uh, Hasbro Pulse did do a big sale. They got 35% off a ton of stuff. I think you got to spend over $70, $79 to get 35% off. But much like Funko, retail space is at a premium. And I think there's Hasbro Warehouse's bursting at the seams right now and they got to do something to alleviate that pressure get some money back so they have a big sale going on they're not going to the dumpster route of funko quite yet but there is a big sale going on on hasbro a lot of people playing the long game cleaning up on some stuff and i do envision mattel hasbro NECA, all these companies they're going to be cutting back on inventory cutting back on production to try to align with the customer demand uh, if you don't you're going to be out of business pretty quick as demand has slowed a ton we see out there at retail i see some harder to find figures repeatedly at stores that haven't even moved haven't even been touched uh, so it's definitely an interesting time here but hasbro also having a big sale going on so if you're a long game player man you're sweeping up right now so good for you out there so that's it. That's all the conspiracies we got this week. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on. We're going to end the video here with, we got one last thought from Jesse Ventura. Before we get to that, let's talk album of the week. And we're going to another great Minnesota legend. We're going to Bob Dylan. Yes, Bob Dylan. I love my heavy metal. I love my outlaw country. I'm a just a musical renaissance man at the end of the day. But Bob Dylan, one of my first all-time loves. A lot of people hate Bob Dylan. A lot of people love Bob Dylan. Uh, a lot of people don't like his voice. I even love his voice. I love it. I've seen Bob Dylan over 20 times in concert, going all the way back to 1996, but around 96, and I think it was 97 technically, he came out with a, an album that really put him back on the radars. He had a few uh, cover albums, unplugged album, uh, things like that. He was just kind of there, but then he shot back up to the world, and that was the Time Out of Mind album. We did get a box set of that. I've been working my way through that one. I wouldn't say it's his greatest album of all time, but it definitely put him back on the platform, and I felt like that really sealed him as an all-time legend. He was before, but a whole new generation saw the legend of Bob Dylan there. 
He performed on the Grammys, we remember. Uh, he had a lot of stuff going on at the time. He almost died. That was part of the album. He wrote songs. He had a heart issue. Um, so a lot of good stuff coming out of that time out of mind. And I love digging into the sessions. Uh, I love deep box sets that show us take one, take two, things like that. So that's going to be my album of the week, Time Out of Mind box set from good old Bob Dylan. And then I asked Jesse, I said, Jesse, if you could give me some more advice here, what would you say? What do I do? And here's what he said. I will keep talking till the very end. The only thing that's going to get my mouth to go closed is when I die. So I'll die first, then I'll quit. But anyway, Kyle, hang in there. You know, uh, be motivated, enjoy life, and enjoy it to the fullest. That's what Jesse Ventura does, and I can tell you it's a recipe for happiness. Good luck, Kyle. I can't thank Governor Jesse Ventura enough. Is He's a guy just like me that's going to get down to these conspiracy theories. He wants to find the truth, and that's what we're trying to find here. Where is the truth? And as we usually find, it's somewhere in the middle. So just be careful on your judgments. Be careful what's going on. Try to find the rest of the story, and I would say that goes for everything. Don't be so easy. It's so easy on social media to jump to things. Let's be careful. Let's watch. Let's take. Let's find the whole story, then make a decision from there. So there it is. Is an action-packed conspiracy episode of the Toy News of the Week, an all-timer, probably our longest one ever. Thank you to all those guys that stuck it out to the very end here. A lot going on on the channel as usual. Of course, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to turn on the old notification bell and check out the Patreon for early access to videos like this. Bonus content, Q&A, exclusive videos, you name it. And best of all, you do support the channel and all of its content. You can also support the channel over at ProWrestlingTees.com. Thanks to all you guys that picked up shirts this week on that big Pro Wrestling Tees sale. And don't forget to hit me up and follow along over on social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for the Toy News of the Week, I'm Kyle, and I'm rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling my way into the weekend, and I'll see you guys all real soon. Hi, Kyle. Governor Jesse Ventura here, or in the days of wrestling, Jesse the Body Ventura. Uh, thanks for doing this, uh, and you want to uh, talk to me?